Being able to activate brown fat to burn calories is one of the most powerful tools that you can have in your toolbox. It is not the only thing that is making you lose weight, but it is a very valuable tool. Okay, people that say that brown fat doesn't matter when it comes down to losing weight are the same people that would say, well, tanks don't matter because tanks don't win the war by themselves. But it's still important. Brown fat is still a huge piece. And now there's a newer study published in the journal Diabetes Metabolism that came right out and said, look, at, brown fat is a very viable thing when it comes down to the fight against obesity. So it's actually getting recognized now. So brown fat is the fat that is stored on our body, usually in specific depots, that, like different areas where it's deposited, that burn calories as heat. It's there because when it gets cold, it can generate heat. Okay, but there's a lot of things we can do with our diet to create more of this brown fat, but then also activate it once it is there. Most of the criticism that surrounds the whole brown fat thing comes because look, there's two real things that are happening when we say brown fat activation. Brown fat activation is sort of a catch-all term for two very different things happening in the body. Okay, one is the actual activation. Okay, brown fat activation means you are activating brown fat that you already have. That is a very good thing, but that also requires you to already have a good amount of brown fat. If you activate the brown fat, then you are going to burn more through the brown fat. The other form of brown fat activation is really called beijing, okay, and that is the browning of white fat. That means you're taking regular unsightly subcutaneous white fat and it's developing properties of brown fat. It's becoming brown, which can therefore be activated later on. So let's cut to the chase and talk about these specific foods. The first one, omega-3s are heavily researched in this field, right? When we look at brown fat, there's a lot of research there. There was a study that was published in the journal Adipocyte that looked at omega-3s and found that omega-3s do two things. They brown white fat and they activate existing brown fat. Okay, so it can actually help white fat turn into brown fat, but then if you have brown fat, it helps that turn on and burn more calories as heat. They found that omega-3s stimulate a higher expression of what are called uncoupling proteins, and uncoupling proteins are involved in the electron transport chain to where they kind of divert energy that would normally go into creating energy, they divert it and dissipate it as heat. Okay, and they've demonstrated this in mice. They found that when they actually look at their rectal temperature, mice that had omega-3s are literally running hotter because their bodies are in a higher state of thermogenesis. Okay, well, it's enough talk about that weird thing. Let's move on. There was another study that was published in the journal Nature Communications that found that there's a specific protein called GRP120. Now, here's what's wild. It turns out that GRP120 is what omega-3 reacts with, okay? Because they found in mice that are do not have GRP120, where it's deleted. With no GRP120, omega-3s do not stimulate the increase in temperature. They do not stimulate the brown fat activation. But as soon as the GRP120 is there again, the omega-3s bind to it and trigger the heat. So clearly, that is what's going on. Omega-3s bind to this particular protein, GRP120, that triggers this awesome thermogenic effect that is happening deep down inside our body. So yes, eat the salmon. Yes, take the fish oil. Load up on it. I'm a fan of mega-dosing it, but that's just me. Anyway, moving on to the next one, MCT oil. There was a really cool study that was published in the journal Environmental Sciences, and this one this one threw me a loop because there's some, I bag on MCT oil sometimes, but there's some things when it comes down to thermogenesis where it is just awesome. This study found that 12 weeks of MCT oil supplementation resulted in greater mass of the intrascapular brown fat deposits. So intrascapular, like the middle of our back, that's where most mammals store brown fat. It's just where it is. Okay, it's not like you're gonna see this like globby hunchback thing. It's like not that much fat. But the reality is when you increase the mass there, you're going to be burning more calories as heat. So it didn't mean that these people just gained weight and put it in their hunchback. No, it means that they just developed more mass within the fat depots there, which is phenomenal for calorie burning. It also increased beta-3 adrenergic receptors. Now, this is really cool because these beta-3 adrenergic receptors, this is where adrenaline and norepinephrine, all this stuff, this is what they run through to create thermogenesis. So when we take in caffeine or when we work out and we have adrenaline pumping, it runs through these beta receptors and actually creates thermogenesis. So when we stimulate more activity there with MCT oil, we are literally creating more of a thermogenic effect right then and there. 
They also found in this study that hormone-sensitive lipase was more active in the brown fat tissue of those that had MCT. So in the existing brown fat, MCT oil made it so that there was more hormone-sensitive lipase, meaning the calories that were incinerated at the brown fat tissue level were mainly from fat. So that's amazing, right? And of course, higher expression of uncoupling proteins. So we see that MCT oil is a potent activator, not as much of a beiger or a browning tool, but much more of an activator if you already have brown fat. Uh, my recommendation, by the way, for MCT oil there's a lot of cool different brands out there and a lot of cool different things that you can check out. So I put a link down below for Thrive Market. Thrive Market's an online membership-based grocery store. A lot of the things I'm talking about in today's video, even all the way down to omega-3s or good sardines or good canned salmon, anything like that, you can get through Thrive Market. And I have some of my favorites that are listed there. They're an online grocery store. So you go there, they ship everything to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store for most of your pantry staples. It makes it super easy. They are a supporter and a sponsor of this channel, so I appreciate their support. But I wanna make sure that you check them out there's a 25% off link down below so you can save some money off the membership and also get a free gift when you use that link down below. So again, it's called Thrive Market. You can sort by whatever your diet you're doing. So if you're doing paleo, keto, whatever, you just select that category and all the foods within that category will pop up. Makes it super easy. So again, that link is down below in the description. Okay, this next one is super interesting. Hot peppers, right? We've heard that, okay, if you have chili powder or cayenne, that it can increase your metabolic rate. I mean, that's not necessarily the case. It doesn't just like magically, because it's hot, make you burn fat. But there's some interesting evidence that shows that it could be a pretty cool browning tool and possibly an activator. Check this out. There's a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at 80 subjects, okay, and they divided them into two groups, gave them either a placebo or six milligrams of capsinoids. Okay, that's going to be just a form of, capsinoids just come from a, like a chili or just various forms of chili. Okay, and they wanted to measure what this would do. Well, they found after 12 weeks that the weight didn't change in those that had the capsinoids, but their levels of central adiposity decreased. Basically, they lost abdominal fat. So that's kind of interesting. What's doing something there. They also found that fatty acid oxidation increased tremendously but resting energy expenditure did not. So it didn't really change their metabolism, but it did change what fuel they were burning. They were burning more fat, and they were burning more fat from the midsection, which is fascinating. Well, what could possibly be going on? Well, there's another study that kind of contradicts part of it, but then it all makes sense. This study was published in the journal Nutrition, and in this study they gave them nine milligrams of capsinoids, and they found that those nine milligrams of capsinoids increased whole body energy expenditure quite tremendously. So these guys had an increase in energy expenditure, but it was only in those that already had higher levels of existing brown fat. Those that did not have existing brown fat didn't have much of a change, it was negligible. So it turns out that hot peppers absolutely can increase your whole body thermogenesis, whole body energy expenditure, but you have to have existing brown fat. So you have to be applying some of these other things that I talked about earlier in order to get that effect. So having hot peppers or taking in say MCT oil that's maybe been like having some chili soaked in it, so maybe it's spicy MCT oil, perhaps that's something that you might wanna introduce. Anyway, there's more. If we understand how this works, it just makes some sense. We have this thing called a TRPV1 receptor, okay? And it's expressed in our gut. And when we have something spicy, it's not that we're just getting hot and melting fat. What it does is it stimulates this TRPV receptor and that sends something up the vagus nerve. So we have this vagus nerve that travels from our gut to our brain. So it stimulates this signal up the vagus nerve, this afferent signal that creates these kind of new neural paths. Well, when it does this, it sends a signal that activates that beta-3 adrenergic receptor again. So in this case, it's independent of any kind of cold exposure or any kind of adrenaline. We are flat out going through that beta adrenergic receptor. So it's almost as though the body is being treated as though it's having an adrenaline spike and it's burning fat as if it's having an adrenaline spike, but it's purely coming from the spice. That is what is fascinating. So in those that already have brown fat, it's inducing this beta-3 adrenergic response for those people. But since it's activating along that pathway, if people don't have a lot of brown fat, it's not going to do a whole lot of good for them. So you need to kind of apply the other things I've talked about. Additionally, here's something you can add in. If you utilize curcumin, curcumin is a very potent brown fat activator in the sense that it browns fat for you. 
They found in studies that subjects that consumed curcumin ended up expressing much more uncoupling protein. They had more mitochondrial mass. They had more PGC1A. They had more PPAR alpha. Basically, all these things that were indicative of a white fat cell turning into a brown fat cell. So adding some turmeric into the mix could be a powerful way to get that browning to occur so you get the benefit from some of these other things that I'm talking about. And last but not least, there was a study that was published in Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, and it found that subjects that were just exposed to even moderately cold temperatures, we're talking like 64 degrees, 18 degrees Celsius, okay, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, they found that all they had to do was be exposed to that cool of a temperature. And if they already had good amounts of brown fat, that brown fat would get activated tremendously to the point where their peripheral glucose uptake would increase by 20%. They measured this by giving these people fluorescent glucose, which doesn't sound healthy, but either way, fluorescent glucose to the point where they could monitor where the glucose was going. And then when they put them in a room and had them get cold at only 64 degrees, not even that cold, they found that the glucose would travel to the actual brown fat tissue and it would burn there instead of going and circulating in other ways. So it increased the amount of glucose that was taken up and burned simply by being in a moderately cold room. So again, exposing yourself to cold is gonna improve the browning of the white fat, then it's gonna activate the brown fat, but if you apply these other things, you really have some interesting tools in your toolbox, along with, of course, a healthy diet to really get yourself in great shape. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.